Yo, welcome to this video. If you're watching this, you are probably waiting for Diablo 4 to come out just like me. Um, so <laughs> you ran out of videos to watch and you're watching this one. Uh, I just wanted to revisit uh, how I experienced um, previous Diablo games and what there was to do in the end game because uh, as I have been looking forward to D4 coming out, I, I've been watching a lot of stuff, lots of people's takes on the beta, on what they expect out of the end game. And um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to run through what my experience was in these previous games and compare what's coming down the pipe, or at least what it looks like is coming in D4. Uh, so let's start with Diablo 2. I'm going to stick to what I know, which is Diablo 2 Classic, because while I did play Diablo 2 Expansion, uh, I didn't like it as much as Diablo 2 Classic. I don't know. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I just didn't. Um, Diablo 2 Classic felt uh, felt more at home to me because uh, it was all about the rares. You know, you'd go out there, you'd grind, you'd hope you'd find something good. You probably never did. I probably found two godly items in my entire time. And, uh, and you know, I played the shit out of that game. So, <laughs> you know, you come up empty-handed a bunch. But there was something so fun about this that somehow, um, somehow this game loop just didn't really seem to get old. Uh, yeah, by the way, I'm in Figma, you know, uh, I'm a developer, not a game developer. And so I do flowcharts and stuff in Figma. So uh, forgive the extra layer of nerdiness here. But so, so in Diablo 2, you kind of had this, uh, this thing where you would play the campaign, or let's be honest, you would get rushed. And uh, you get rushed through normal nightmare in hell, uh, or you just scrape and claw your way through that if you were doing it legit. And uh, normal mode, you really wouldn't end up doing you know any kind of end game things. But uh, but in nightmare, if you were like me and your character just freaking sucked, uh, you would you'd grind out some end aerial runs. You go to the catacombs, you know, make your presence known. Throw a couple frozen orbs, because let's be honest, you were making a, a sorceress so that you could magic find faster. You'd throw some uh, some frozen orbs, or maybe you you know you were a barbarian and you clawed your way up to uh, to level thirty until you got whirlwind, and you just started uh, dishing out punishment to all the the fallen shaman and whatever, getting revenge, whirlwinding through the mobs, and uh, and so you'd do that in catacombs. You'd find some stuff, whatever. In nightmare, you'd also probably do durance of hate. Go go give Mephisto a, a, a visit, um, and uh, maybe the maybe the council, you know, in Travensel. So so, anyways, you you'd get geared up enough to where you could handle content in Hell, and then in Hell you would really, because of the way item levels worked, uh, you know, you would never even really find great stuff uh, killing Mephisto. You would uh, you'd do Travensel, and you'd go to the River of Flame. To kill Diablo, of course. Uh, so this was really the end game. Uh, I've left out some stuff here for for the D2 expansion people. You know, you've also got runes, so you'd be going, paying the countess a visit, having all kinds of fun running through her five levels of that tower, um, fucking up her wine cellar once you got down to level four and five. You know, looking for those burr runes, whatever. You did that. I didn't. Uh, okay, so, but basically the end game loop was like this. And, uh, and you'd of course go to the stony field as well. Uh, so you could go, uh, through the cane stones, go to Tristram, get Wurt's leg, laugh a little bit, because this little, this kid was always ripping you off in D1. Um, you know, gotta give it to him. He's, he was, he was a hustler, you know, he was out there doing his side hustle, ripping us off man he was he was charging me outrageous fees just these for these not even that great amulets that you know it was just a slight upgrade from what i had anyways i'm traumatized uh i gotta admit i was always a little bit i felt like he got what he deserved you know I, you shouldn't say that about any anybody you know getting getting killed by a swarm of demons but um every time i grabbed Wurt's leg i was like goddamn right Okay, so we get we get Wurt's leg, we go do the cow levels, uh, right? You know, that that's why you would get Wurt's leg. 
And then uh, everything else you did, if you weren't just going to a couple select waypoints in Diablo 2, killing some bosses, uh, trying to get some of that loot, leaving the game. That's why I have this image here, because this is what you were looking at a bunch. If you were magic finding too hard, if you were too much of a gamer, uh, this little light here, you were always scared this door wasn't going to open, right? You were always scared you were going to get the uh, realm down or, or whatever the hell you would get right and uh and you you couldn't log in for like 20 minutes so uh you know gotta be careful don't magic find too hard um but then uh if you weren't doing a hunt for loot you'd go in and you'd uh you'd spend your entire saturday uh just sitting there in the rogue encampment talking mad shit to everybody and doing pvp um and of course, gambling all your gold before you go out there and die in the, the Bloodmore, the area right outside of the Rogue Encampment. Uh, I don't need to tell you that because you were nerding out in Diablo 2 just as hard as me, if you're watching this video, probably. So other than that, you might stand around in the Rogue Encampment all day, wasting your time trading, uh, maybe get ripped off. Okay, so this was the game loop in D2, D2 Classic specifically. Probably a couple more things. Killing Bale, doing all that stuff. Killing Pindleskin if you're into the expansion. Um, okay. So, then you move into D3. And I've got this a little bit simplified. You know, of course, there are, there are lots of places you could go to to do bounties. There were lots of places uh, that you could go to to do rifts. But ultimately, what Diablo 3's endgame boiled down to is uh, this little picture here. Yeah, we got some we got some nice zoom over here. And you would you'd go into that little portal and you would kill all the things, collect your purple orbs, kill the boss, get some loot, or you'd run around doing bounties, looting bounty caches and getting those materials that you might need to re-roll rares into uh or to roll rares into legendaries or whatever, hoping you get an ancient or a primal ancient. So this is the game loop. And I gotta say, honestly, I had fun playing Diablo 3. It wasn't as fun as playing Diablo 2 for me personally. Uh, there was just this je ne sais quoi about Diablo 2 and its itemization and all the things where even running these same loops over and over again, um, I don't know, man, they put, they put a little something in there. There was some addictive substance that was there in D2 that I was kind of missing in D3. Uh, but I still I still had plenty of fun playing D3, but you know, it just never quite felt as magical for me. But now we come down to Diablo 4, and I've gotta say, you know, I played, like I'm not gonna lie to you, um, I have my doubts about uh, Diablo 4. I wasn't even excited about it that much until the end of 2022. Started seeing some game footage, um, you know, started um, really wanting to get my hands on the beta that eventually came out in March, and I played the shit out of the beta. I gotta say, it was a lot of fun, and you were locked into this one zone. Here we've got a map with, uh, with a bunch of the dungeons and whatnot, but, um, but I'm really optimistic about where Diablo 4 is going. And the end game here seems interesting enough as a baseline. So the uh, the game is coming out and the game is coming out as a baseline. They have said, and it's pretty clear to me, as a developer completely unrelated to games, I understand the concept of launching and then iterating on what you built. And if you built a real shitty base, it's harder to iterate in a good direction. But if you launch a really solid base, there there are all kinds of directions you can spin off on. And uh, you know, if you have a solid foundation that you're standing on, you've got all kinds of different uh, incredible things you can do with it. And I think that there is a, a really good base here for Diablo 4, a base that is fun enough for me to play. Like they they could uh, they could just have this game as is, and I would have more fun I think than I had in Diablo 3. And I had a lot of fun there. And I think with what Diablo 4 is, is offering, um, it might end up for me personally even being more fun than Diablo 2. Uh, because in Diablo 2, I, I loved it, you know, I had a lot of fun, but this uh, this game loop 
it was very repetitive and it got tiresome. So, so there's a there's a little bit of um, you know diversity going on here with Diablo 4. So you reach the end game, you'll play through the campaign, and then in any given zone, you're going to have hell tides come up. So hell tides are going to be something that you're going to encounter in the later tiers. Uh, I guess I should have probably added something over here for that. You know, you have uh, uh, let's say that you're an experienced Diablo player, you're going to play through the veteran world tier. That's world tier two. And then when you get to the end, you're going to complete a capstone dungeon. You're going to go. You're going to go into nightmare mode. And in nightmare mode, you're going to have better loot falling. You also have these hell tide events that spawn. And the hell tides are going to be things that are um, just like harder enemies in the area. But also, you collect cinders when you kill enemies and stuff. And those cinders, you can spend them at these uh, these caches that are only available in the hell tide areas only available while the Helltide event is going on, and you lose half of your cinders if you happen to die. So, so it's a kind of fun dynamic here of uh, high risk, high reward, or medium risk, medium reward. Um, let's be honest, if it, especially if we're, we'll say high risk, high rewards down here for PVP. So medium risk, medium reward for Helltides. Uh, but it sounds fun, you know, you get a Helltide spawning up in different zones, you're gonna go over there, you're gonna do some stuff, you're gonna get some loot. Cool, I like it. That's why we play these games. Uh, then any dungeon you could run around in, you know, you're uh, you're gonna want to complete every dungeon once if you're trying to get all of the uh, legendary aspects, which you can add into your Codex of Power. Uh, granted, not every legendary aspect is. Uh, available through the codec, codex of power so you're still going to be out there hunting for loot to get certain legendary aspects or to get unique items uh, which you cannot get from uh, just completing a dungeon and having a codex of power so dungeons are, are cool probably going to be something you know your go-to if you're not doing a helltide event or if you don't have a sigil to do a nightmare dungeon you're probably just doing normal dungeons to get that high density of uh, elites and whatever so in the world map, you're just running around. I think the way this is going to work is you're going to loot a nightmare sigil. Uh, then you'll have some dungeon somewhere that is that you can turn into a nightmare dungeon. You'll go do that. You'll loot some gear. You'll uh, also, upon successfully completing that, be able to upgrade your glyphs. So the glyphs being a part of the Paragon board, um, which is you know a nice little feature of Diablo 4. I think Diablo 4 is bringing some, some cool stuff in terms of... Uh, uh, some kind of balancing act between the itemization of D2 and what everybody liked about Diablo 2's itemization. They are trying, now you can be the judge of how successful this attempt is going to be, but they are trying to, um, to do a little bit more creative of a gearing process than what you had in D3. In Diablo 3, it was like, hey, you have a choice between... Uh, <laughs> between vanilla and vanilla with sprinkles. Which build do you want? And in Diablo 2, you, you just had, it was like, hey, um, you better find the best damn item that ever rolled or you're just gonna get stomped. Uh, maybe in, in expansion, they gave you a, a bit more of a way to, to find these runes and make rune words and they had more powerful uniques. But, um, but I, I think in Diablo 4, that itemization, it's actually going to be a bit more, uh, it has a bit more depth to it than what's what a lot of critics are giving it credit for. So I would say just hold tight, wait to experience it. Um, you know, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of ways to get decent enough gear in D4 fairly quickly. But getting your best in slot, that is going to be where the grind is. And... Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a fun grind. So then uh, then with world bosses, of course, you're going to be able to go find wherever the world bosses are. In the, the beta, we know Ashava is somewhere out here in the eastern part of the Fractured Peaks. So you kill world boss, you get some loot. You know, go figure. Then you have uh, bounties through the Tree of Whispers. So we'll see how these bounties play out, but um, very similar probably to the Diablo 3 style. You know, there is a bounty, whatever wrapping that is wrapped in, whatever whatever bells and whistles are on it, you know, whatever we choose to call it, it's going to be some form of a bounty and you're going to get a bounty cache when you complete it. So cool. Rather have that in the game than not have it in the game. Uh, then you have Fields of Hatred and you're going to be going out to some zone where you can kill enemies, um, PvE, 
and collect shards of hate, but you're going to be forced into a, a potential PvP situation when you purify those shards of hate that you've collected, um, or you might camp the area where people are the areas where people are purifying their shards of hate and just gank somebody and, and steal their uh, steal their shards uh, of hate. So, or, or no, wait, I don't know if they're shards of hate or if they're called seeds of hatred, something like that. But you're purifying one of them and getting a currency that you can then go spend, uh, essentially gambling these this currency for gear. And then, uh, yeah, you've got world events and stuff that are going on. So that's a great way to, to just run around the map, have fun. You're bouncing between dungeons. You're, uh, you're going to hell tides. You're doing Tree of Whispers bounties and you're doing world events at the same time. I think this sounds like a really nice mix and a really good baseline of content to roll through, especially considering what we're looking at in this map. This is one zone, this is like act one. Uh, so sorry, yeah, multiple zones, but this is act one. And so, man, I gotta be honest, I can't wait to see how they re-envision some of these things from like, you know, um, act three in the flare jungle. You know, what are those, those little rat men that used to, uh, <laughs> The, they used to jump on each other's shoulders and then they'd like uh, they'd have the shaman thing that's blowing fire at you and whatever. Like, uh, who even knows what those guys really looked like because the graphics were so bad back then in D2. But, um, I mean, bad in a good way. It was so, so much fun running through there. But I can't wait to see how they reimagine some of these things. And, like, dung beetles or whatever from, from Act 2 that, that shoot the lightning out and, uh, and all the stuff. Um, Super excited to see what all the other areas look like. But so this is uh, this was just my kind of run through of, of my understanding so far of kind of what what the end game loops looked like, what I experienced in D2, what I experienced in D3, and what I think we're gonna experience in D4. Uh, so as you are running out of videos to watch before D4 comes out, um, you know, hopefully this gave you that little uh, that little dopamine hit of uh, of talking about Diablo that um, maybe you were looking for. So until the game comes out, maybe I'll see you in future videos.